Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmidlkoffer, and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And on today's episode, the question of the day is, how is constipation an early symptom of Parkinson's disease? And Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disease that has a combination of genetic and environmental factors. And uh, I would like to, to think that it's more environmentally based. And one of the major symptoms, at least the early symptoms that will continue throughout the disease process is constipation. And if we go back to what Parkinson's disease is, it is a problem in the midbrain. So the midbrain is the top of the brainstem, and in there, there are these cells that make dopamine. Dopamine is the movement neurotransmitter and the reward neurotransmitter. It's the transmitter that gets released after you do something exciting or something that you like um, because it kind of increases that reward. It is at the same time going to help to increase movement and make movement smooth and uh, motivate you to actually move. And so people with Parkinson's disease, you see them kind of hunched over, maybe uh, a masked face or a face that is uh, not as expressive. And then you also see slowness of movements. And then late down into the into the progression of the disease, you might see a resting tremor. It's a hill rolling tremor in the thumb and fingers, okay? And it's generally presents mostly on one side to start, but it can also go to the other side as well, even though both parts of that midbrain that secrete dopamine are affected. And the reason why constipation is one of the early signs, along with loss of smell, is because this environmental problem, um, like environmental toxins that can either get into your body and then into the brain through the nose or through the gut. And so I mostly want to talk about the gut because there are a lot of environmental toxins, whether that be um, lectins that are in certain foods, pesticides that are sprayed on foods um, that can get into the gut as we eat them. And then get into the vagus nerve and the vagus nerve can then transmit those particles transmit these misfolded proteins up into the brainstem and affect and, and cause parkinson's disease and so let's get right into a couple papers um, the first one we're going to talk about is a new one from 2019 and it's a mini review, it's called The Gut and Parkinson's Disease, a Bi-Directional Pathway. And so just in the beginning, the abstract, um, it talks about the enteric nervous system. And the enteric nervous system is the part of the nervous system that is in the gut. Um, and it's the gateway for the bi-directional communication between the brain and gut. So there's a brain and gut access that we have that is also modulated by our microbiome. Um, this brain and gut is mostly connected through the vagus nerve. Vagus nerve starts at the bottom of the brainstem and goes all throughout the gut, um, at least for the first three quarters of it. And then, so the gut microbiome is also um, going to be have environmental exposure and play a pivotal role. And this may contribute to the susceptibility to neurodegenerative disorders such as Parkinson's disease. So the neuropathological hallmark of Parkinson's disease is the widespread alpha-synuclein ignorance. This is just a protein in the in the body that then is there it's there in everybody and it misfolds and then binds together in clumps to form these Lewy bodies um, and that's the hallmark of Parkinson's disease and specifically those being in that that midbrain um, so these happen in the central peripheral and enteric nervous system uh, many studies have suggested that gut toxins can induce the formation of these alpha-synuclein aggregates in the enteric nervous system, which may be transmitted in a prion or protein-like fashion to the CNS through the vagus nerve, to that midbrain. Um, and again, evidence showing that gut-associated dysbiosis and related microbial-derived components um, 
can act as important players in the risk for Parkinson's disease and therefore even the therapeutic um, or therapeutic modalities that we can use. And so let's just go right to this, this picture here. And so this is a good diagram showing that we have the brain and we have the gut and we have multiple connections between the brain and gut, mainly the vagus nerve pathway, but also this non-vagal nerve pathway, which is basically through the bloodstream or through our lymphatic system. Um, lymphatic system is part of our immune system. And so over here, when it's blown up, we have the gut microbiome, which we have are full of typical bacteria, um, full of these bacteria that are good, these viruses, these lytic bacteriophages as well, um, tons of bacteria that are in the gut, uh, helping us to digest food, helping us to um, hold down our anti-inflammatory environment. Well, <clears throat> what can happen is that through environmental toxins and pesticides, through maybe lectins that are in food, this, this um, epithelium, this wall or barrier in the gut can be broken down. And then these microbiome can get in and cause inflammation. These microbiome can secrete peptides and hormones. Um, it can create environmental, um, or sorry, it can create an inflammatory load. And what can happen then is then we have these alpha-synuclein bodies, alpha-synuclein uh, proteins that form in the enteric nervous system, the nervous system in the gut, and they can travel up the vagus nerve pathway into the brain and then get into that midbrain causing those dopamine issues. Well, if this vagus nerve pathway is being full of alpha-synuclein bodies, it doesn't work as well. And this vagus nerve is essential for secreting or for um, modulating our gut motility. And our gut motility is essential in moving our bowels through. And if we can't do that, we can get constipation. And this is why constipation is one of these early symptoms of Parkinson's disease that it goes on maybe for 10, 15 years before other clinical signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease develop. Um, and this is why if you have this, this chronic constipation that does not get better unless you have to use a laxative or you constantly have to use laxatives or other stool softeners always just to be able to have a bowel movement, this is something that should be checked out. This is, if more people understand these early signs and symptoms, then we can have a better strategy in order to determine if this is an early, an early phase, an early sign of Parkinson's. Um, and then how to properly treat it before the progression actually starts. Um, so if we go kind of on this realm and we go to another paper here, um, this is a paper in PLOS One. So it's the progression of Parkinson's disease is associated with gut dysbiosis. Um, this is a two-year follow-up study. And so what they did was they wanted to decide if gut dysbiosis correlated with a a stronger progression of Parkinson's disease. And so they looked at Parkinson's disease patients, 36 of them, over two years. And the results were that there was a change in the total UPDRS, which is the Unified Parkinson's Disease Rating Scale. It's just a scale that is able to grade movements, like finger tap movements, how fast, um, how well those movements are. Um, and so this scale was used and there was a change in the two years. This was predicted based on the counts of specific bacterial species, the phytobacterium and atobovine. And this was for starting at year zero, and then they looked at it at year two, and the, the ones that had the lowest counts of these two species at year zero were then associated with worsening UDPRS scores in two years, worsening. So, if you don't have enough of these beneficial bacterium, then that may affect the gut even more, cause more brain gut access problems, and then they're leading to more dopamine deficiency and progression of Parkinson's disease. Um, things here were like worsening of hallucinations and delusions in two years. Um, the bacteroid fragilis at year zero was um, correlated with worsening of motivation and initiative in two years. Um, which are all, all pretty important to look at. 
Uh, more conclusions, so the total counts of intestinal bacteria decrease in the course of Parkinson's disease progression. Um, therefore, we might be able to look at this and exploit different, um, different Parkinson's disease patients that are more susceptible for a stronger progression. Therefore, treat it with these bacterial um, species through probiotics, but also a healthy diet and getting rid of those environmental toxins and pesticides and lectins that may be in the foods that we're eating. So uh, I know this is only a subset of Parkinson's disease and this is, um, Parkinson's disease is such a, a widespread topic. I could do many more videos on this, um, but I really wanted to emphasize that constipation is an early symptom and that more people really need to understand this so that we can better identify it. Um, gastroenterologists can then better identify it so that we can get proper uh, support for these patients early on before they need to get on medication, before the progression um, hits home and you start having more symptoms of movement and reward problems, um, initiative motivation issues. And so I hope you really enjoyed this one. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them. Thank you for listening and stay healthy.